Hey, what's up, YouTube? Happy Friday. Look what I found in my bucket of green machines. I forgot that I had this one. Should have been done in the Chevelle video because it's probably the... I don't know. It's not the nicest one. Talladega Nights. But that thing is so sick for not being a green body green machine. That thing is just monster. The lighting is pretty awful, but totally sick, and I totally forgot that I had it. It's a low number, number 43. See if I can get my camera. That is dope. <clears throat> All right. Look at that thing. Even the bumpers are blacked out. Pretty sweet there, Black Bandit. I don't know. This was the one either right before or right after the the other Black Bandit Greenie with the green body. And uh, this here is a 1972 Chevelle SS. So what we're going to do here... over here <clears throat> another car from Dreadnought this amazing green machine needs to be added into the collection so this is a series 10 Hollywood also from series 10 is this 71 Dodge Charger now, Series 10, um, <clears throat> it was the uh, Gas Monkey Dodge truck, <clears throat> the Gas Monkey Ford Bronco, and uh, then you had the two Kill Bill cars. You had the, what was the black, little black Corvette? Was that, I don't think it was Dallas. Maybe it was. I don't know, but I have four of the six. It's not... It's not a rare set. These are numbered to like 250. Okay, so by M2 standards, they're really rare. But by green light standards, they're not rare. 250 is pretty high. But Hollywood series are always going to have more green machines because they're produced at usually double or triple the quantity of all the other releases. So here we go crack this thing open green and gold that green and gold in the package looks really good together I imagine it's not going to be a whole lot different taking it out of the package here if anything it'll look better Definitely looks good. I just got to get my camera to focus a little better here. Damn, I ain't focusing for shit. All right, so there you go from Kill Bill. It's a movie I have never seen. And it's an awesome Trans Am. That might be the nicest Trans Am green machine. I don't know, because I don't have all of them. Actually, I don't have hardly any of them. And I know they put out quite a few. It's the nicest one I've seen. 
Uh, let's take a, a look at a couple others here. Got Kid Rock's Trans Am. From Joe Dierte. This one is mm, okay. It doesn't really have a whole lot of wow factor to it. These Trans Ams are nice, but if you have a handful of Auto World Trans Ams, as I do, once you have an Auto World Trans Am, it's hard to appreciate any of the others because they those things are just so amazing. But uh, this one's pretty cool. I like it. I like the silver. The uh, Kill Bill definitely looks a lot better. And another Trans Am that I wanted to take a look at. I haven't looked at this one in a while, but this one here is another one that's it's it's not very rare. It's silver 200, but by green light standards, I don't know what it is about Series 1 Hollywood cars. Series 1 anything green light, except for the new stuff that's coming out lately, is impossible to find. So... This is a Series 1 Hollywood Smokey and the Bandit Green Machine. Impossible to find. It's impossible to find the regular release of this, much less the Green Machine. And uh, I got lucky and found it at a local diecast local diecast club meeting. And uh, it needs to be wiped off. It's got some fingerprints on it, but... It does look pretty good, I think. One way you can tell the Series 1 from all of the re-releases, because this has come out quite a few times, but one way you can always tell is that front license plate. I'm pretty sure that the only one to have the Rebel flag is the Series 1 Hollywood release. And you have to remember this car came out, it came out in a hitch and toe set. It came out in a Hollywood film reel. It came out in series one. It, it came out in a Hollywood re-release. So it's been out lots and lots and lots of times. And then you have the Smokey and the Bandit 2, which is this, it's not the same car, but it's similar. And that one's been out many times on its own so but one way you can tell is with that rebel flag I and I think this is the only one to have the rebel flag so and I don't know if there's like base codes or something on these maybe the base code could tell you as well but it's a cool car I like it and then, uh, so back, back to the uh, Series 10 Hollywood for Kill Bill, we have the 71 Dodge Charger, which is an awesome car. And now we have the Trans Am. So the Charger is a 71, the Trans Am is a 79. And uh, one, thing uh, one thing Greenlight does with these releases, this Hollywood Series 10 release, all the green machines were green body. So within the six car set, if the, either they're all green body or they're all green wheels, they don't. It's very, very, very rare that some of the cars will be green wheel and some will be green body. It doesn't hardly ever happen. 
or it hardly ever happens. So those are pretty cool. And then one other car I wanted to give an honorable mention to as I was pulling out the Trans Ams, I came across it. I haven't seen, I haven't looked at this car in a while, but this is another one that's really hard to find. Um, it's Black Bandit, and I don't remember. It's an earlier series, maybe Series 5, somewhere in there. It's a 2009 Dodge Challenger. And it's totally sick. This one's really lit, really rare. It's numbered under 100. And the profile on it, or the silhouette, is just dope. So there you have it, green light, green machines, very fun to collect. These cars, I've had more luck finding green machines than, I think I found more green machines, well, I don't know, I found 27 or 28 supers in the three years I've been collecting. I've probably found around 20 green machines. But I've never found an ultra red because they hard Auto World hardly ever releases crap. I did find an ultra raw once from the license premium as a Dodge Dart swinger. Um, the one with the vinyl top, I found that as a raw. But I've never found an ultra red. Um, I found one white lightning which was like on Fish and Vista Wagon. And I found a bunch of M2 Chase stuff, but I don't, I've always traded that off just because I, I don't care about M2. It's just not, it's not worthy of uh, my collection in my opinion. Um, why is there a side view mirror? I literally just picked up a side view mirror. Look at that. Let's see if you can see this. I just picked up this side view mirror off my diorama. I wonder what car that's to. It's not to any of these. I wonder what it's to. Almost looks like it might be to a, a Kyosho or something. Green light doesn't do a lot, if even any. They may not even do any side views. So, all right, well, let's do a quick uh, street view and then we'll wrap this video up. It's going to be the only video of the night. I really like this Chevelle. I'm kind of bummed out that it didn't make that Chevelle video. That thing is just so awesome. It's probably the nicest car here of all these. Got the Bandit Trans Am, the Kill Bill. That is a really good looking car.
that's going to wrap up the video. Thanks for checking it out. Uh, hopefully I'll be back this weekend with something. But if not, I will holler at you some other time at the next awesome diecast video. So, oh, oh man, I, I can't believe how many questions I've been getting lately about this diorama. Um, just a lot of questions. I've done videos. <clears throat> they're not really how-tos. They're more just uh, like progress updates and stuff like that. Um, somebody asked how I do the road and the parking lot. There's a lot of like how-to videos online for uh, dioramas, HO scale train dioramas. So I would just suggest checking them out. But for me, um, I've done, this is my third major diorama that I did. The second one that I did, I bought plaster and I mixed the plaster and I used the plaster for the, the terrain texture because you don't want to just get a board and then put turf on it and or even just like get a board and paint it and then put turf on it you want texture so to get the texture you have a couple of options now Hobby Lobby and hobby shops in general are gonna sell plaster you mix it with water it's like a real fine powder and then you mix it with water and it's very very heavy it's very messy and it can be difficult to work with so in all of my youtube surfing and like watching all the how-to videos that i did <clears throat> i found someone on there who has a massive i think it's ho scale it might be the big the one bigger but he has a huge train diorama and i mean like huge like it takes up like an almost an entire basement and uh, he said, he like one of his shortcuts that he found, and I know, you know, some people don't want to take in air quotes shortcuts, but in this case, especially if it's a static display, it's perfect. And the shortcut is instead of using plaster to get joint compound or uh, otherwise known as spackle or otherwise known as drywall patch you can get it at walmart target you could probably get it at a grocery store uh, it's very readily available it's very inexpensive and it dries i think it dries about the same as the plaster now I have found from using both, I do like the texture better that the plaster provides. Because with the joint compound, you really have to kind of sculpt it into whatever texture you want. Um, but it's so much easier to work with and it's so much less messy. Because it comes in a little tub, you just pull the lid off, you get your little spatula thing and you start spreading it out. So I did a video not all that long ago with this diorama where, where this dealership sits here, this entire thing here was all green grass. It was all green grass and then I was, I had that house on it and I, I needed to do a driveway for the house and then what happened was I ended up buying that gas station and when I bought the gas station, there's nowhere on here to put it other than the street, the dirt road that goes around, or the grass. So I wanted something paved for the gas station. And so what I did is I did, um, I just converted this field here into the, what you see. Now, I did, um take some shortcuts there because I didn't feel like removing the grass which probably would have been the ideal way to do it but going over the top of it the way I did you I mean by looking at it you can't even tell so 
if you guys want, if you're interested, you could go back and watch that video. That video shows you exactly how I did the parking lot. And you do these streets the exact same way. You just, the only difference is you paint them a different color. But they're created exactly the same. And uh, so when I, you know, when I first did this diorama, when after I got all the, the joint compound down, the entire thing was just all white. And the roads were kind of carved out. You could kind of tell that there were roads but everything was white. There was no depth to it. And, uh, you know, the next step after doing that is painting it. You have to paint it before you start laying down turf and dirt and all that stuff. But uh, once you paint it, once you get it painted, you can really start seeing it come together. And then once you start laying turf down, you really start seeing it come together. So it's really easy to do. Um, it's actually like super, super easy to do. And you can do it pretty much on anything you want. The first diorama that I did, I did it on a little Ikea shelf that was probably like 18 inches by nine inches or something like that. And it was just like a little Ikea shelf. So I mean, I could have hung it on the wall. I actually might do that at some point too. But that was the first one I did. And then the second one I did, I did on an Ikea, one of those like $8 um, little end tables. I glued two of them together to make, it was basically about the size of a coffee table. And I did the diorama on that. And uh, I actually would have kept that. The only reason I didn't like it, that was when I started making videos. It was just too low to the ground. And then um, I had this kitchen table this is my, our old kitchen table it's just a pub style table that seats four people and it was just sitting out in the garage and I was like you know I'm gonna put that to use and uh, now looking back I wish I would have done it differently I wish I would have had a board cut the same size as the tabletop and built this on the the board so that I could take it off the table this is all actually like on the table it's all part of the table so it's not coming off it's not going anywhere but uh, if I could do it again I'd do it differently and as I said in the last video there's a good chance I'll be handing this diorama off in a few months uh, and if I do uh, somebody will get it they can they can add to it and make it their own there's a lot of different things you can do to these to make them unique whoever gets it will have to furnish their own buildings they can have that house but the car dealership and the gas station are going to come with me as well as most of these trees not all of them but most of them and i wouldn't care normally but the thing is is that trees these trees are the most expensive part of the diorama although I have found you can get them for really cheap on the internet compared to what like Hobby Lobby they're ridiculous so even with the 40% off they're stupid expensive for what they are so that's it you basically just put the joint compound down you sculpt it how you want it wherever you want your roads you just sand it down as smooth as you want it you don't want it too smooth you want there to be you know tiny like you know realistic cracks and divots and potholes and stuff like that uh, and this road has plenty of them you can't really see them unless you're right up close onto the road but once you have that um, then you paint it and painting it is tricky because you don't want to paint it black. I know that's everybody's first instinct is I got to paint the road black. But roads are not black. So you want to try to come up with a grayish color that works. Like this road here to me is too dark. But at the same time, this parking lot here, which is a cement parking lot, is too light. So somewhere in between those two is where it probably should be. But my advice, if you're going to do a diorama, 
check out the videos online. Um, there's a guy, I think he's in Australia. His dioramas are unbelievable. They look, they look totally real. And he does a lot of really good how-to videos, how to do static grass if you want to do that. And some of the more advanced stuff. There's no, no advanced techniques in this diorama. There is no static grass or anything like that. But there are a lot of really good how-to videos that can help you walk you through the basics. And you can get the stuff. I, I The uh, materials... Not counting the table, the materials to make this diorama, so the craft sticks, the uh, gravel road, the grass, the paints, the shrubbery, the deadfall, the trees. I won't count the buildings because those were about a hundred bucks just for the two buildings. But everything else is probably 40 to $50 with the paint, the bushes, the grass, the dirt, all of that, about maybe 40 to 50 40 to 50 bucks so it's not that much and uh, you don't have to have a ton of artistic ability so all right well that's it guys i uh, i'm gonna wrap it up another thing too i think i did this road a little bit too wide i think it's a little bit too big for for the scale but i could I could fix that with uh, shoulder lines, which the road needs anyways. I think that would fix that. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, that's it. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good night. Have a good weekend. And uh, I'll holler at the next one.